This is the third and probably final part in this mini-series about weight painting. Here we'll finally get to paint bone weights. And at the end of the video I'll show you how to paint your rigify characters, so stay until the end if you're interested in that. Okay, I'm starting from the same scene that we used in the first two videos. Download link is in the description. Also I'll set my shading to solid and uh, color to single. I already explained that in previous parts. Before we start painting, it's important to explain how Blender's armatures are organized. Here I have a Blender armature or a rig and you can see that it consists of these gray shapes that we call bones but also includes these special uh, shapes or widgets. So in general the bones actually deform the mesh and the widgets are used to drive or uh, simplify the movement of the bones but the widgets do not directly deform the mesh. If I go to pose mode this star shape here is the root and it moves the whole rig with it. These circles and at the ankles are uh, IK controls and here we have the pelvis control, these are pole targets and everything else is a normal uh, blender bone. It is important to understand that all of these custom shapes are actually bones. If I go to edit mode, if I go to edit mode you'll see that for example the pole target has become a bone shape, the IK target as well the root as well, and so on and so forth. This is a bit different from other software where the widgets are made from empties or dummies or whatever they may be called in that software. So how does Blender know which bone to use for deformation and which are widgets? This is controlled by the deform property in, in the bone tab. So currently I have selected the root and it has deform turned off. Maybe if I switch to pose mode that would be easier to see. Here we have a widget, the root, and it has the form off. On the other hand, these legs here have the form checked. The spine also has a deform checked, the arm as well, but this pelvis control and the IK target have it unchecked. So if the form is checked, then Blender know that this is a bone that uh, will be used for deformations and if not, then Blender assumes that this bone has another purpose. By the way, this is almost the exact rig that we created in my video uh, called Intro to Blender Armatures. So if you did that exercise, you should understand these things. And if you're new to rigging, then I recommend uh, watching that video. And finally, you may notice that a lot of the deforming bones in, in the rig can be directly manipulated. That is not a problem, although in a more complex professional rig, the deforming bones tend to be on their own layers and widgets are used to animate and pose the rig. Uh, that's how Rigify does it, for example. Okay, finally, weight painting. There are several ways to add the vertex groups that will be used by the deforming bones. One way is to add them manually, but that's just crazy, so let's forget about that. If I select my character and then the rig and press Ctrl P, there are three options here that will create these um, vertex groups that I need automatically. And those are with empty groups, with envelope weights and with automatic weights. Now each of these options, when you click them, they do three things simultaneously. First, they parent your character to the rig. Second, they add the uh, vertex groups. And third, they add a armature modifier. The only difference is that empty groups create empty groups, as the name suggests, whereas envelope weights and automatic weights attempt to create some sort of automatic weighting for your bones. And automatic weights is by far the better option. It creates better results almost every time. The only problem with it is that sometimes uh, it fails with an error. It is something like bone heat uh, failure or something like that. A lot of people are experiencing uh, that error and it has to do with your mesh. If your mesh is a little bit messy or um, sometimes the scale may be the problem, then you may get this error. And so in those cases, you may try envelope weights, but generally I find the results that envelope weights produces so bad and inconsistent that you might as well uh, just start with empty weights. I mean empty groups. So my recommendation is to always start with automatic weights. 
and then tweak uh, the weights where they look bad. I know some people prefer to start with empty weights and then paint everything manually and that's totally fine, but uh, I'm going to choose automatic weights and that's what I do in general. Okay, now I can switch to weight paint mode. Uh, if I select my mesh and go to weight paint mode and then I can go to object data properties and then select the vertex groups that I, uh, that I like and I can start painting. Okay, but I'm going to undo here and please don't start painting yet because we need to set some of these additional options. It is extremely important and also working this way is extremely cumbersome. I mean, you have to go over here and choose your vertex group, then go back to the, the three view and then start painting and then choose another vertex group. That is very, very um, tedious. So Blender has a better solution. I'm going to go to object mode, select the rig, then I'm going to shift select the character and then I'm going to switch to weight paint mode. Now, when I control click on, on one of the bones, First, Blender selects that bone, and second, it activates the vertex group that is associated with that bone. And that is just very, very cool. And not only that, as I have this bone selected, I can press R as normal, and I can rotate my bone. That allows me to see the deformations of my character as I paint the weights. So we are in this weird hybrid mode. The mesh is in weight paint mode, but the armature is in pose mode. That is just great workflow and the Blender developers deserve a thumbs up. Let's see these additional options and then we are ready to go. So first, make sure that this symmetry options are off. You don't want any of these X, Y and Z to be activated or uh, having any radial symmetry. You will almost never use these options when painting bone weights. The next thing is extremely important, enable auto-normalize. In the first video of this series, I tried to explain what weight normalization is and why it is important for bone weights. Basically, auto-normalize will ensure that your weights don't go crazy. I'm going to uncheck auto-normalize and now with that arm uh, highlighted, if I paint some weights over here at, at the leg by, by mistake, then that will create bad uh, deformations, really weird ones actually. And so to fix that error, I'll have to completely erase uh, these, these weights that I painted by mistake manually. And that can be difficult to do. I'm not quite sure if I erased all of them. Let's undo. Now, if I turn auto normalize on and do the same thing, if I now control click on the leg bone, you'll see that these weights have already been subtracted from, from that leg. And all I have to do to fix that is to repaint my weights over here. and they will be automatically removed from that arm. So it is much easier to fix mistakes and, it's, and it is less likely that you'll make mistakes in the first place. So really remember this or write it down. When you paint bone weights, always activate auto-normalize. That is a must. The other important option is X-Mirror. This is similar to, to the mirror modifier for modeling, for example. So you will only need to paint one side of your symmetrical mesh and the other one will be painted automatically. To demonstrate, I can, for example, paint the shoulder of this character over here. And now if I control click on the other arm, you'll see that it's already been painted. And if I slide weight all the way to zero and subtract some weights from over here and then right click the other arm, the weights have been subtracted already. Topology mirror is a little bit special. Sometimes your characters may have symmetrical topology, but the topology could be distorted in a slightly different way on each side. So this option will compensate for that distortion and 
even though your character is not completely uh, symmetrical, you can still paint it as symmetrical. One mistake you should avoid is to use these symmetry options instead of the X mirror. If I turn off X mirror and instead use the symmetry mirror in the X axis, and then again I paint the shoulder of this character with weight of one, you will see that this weight is being mirrored on the other side, but for this bone, not for the not for the bone on the other side. So now if I rotate this arm, it kind of uh, affects the opposite shoulder, which is pointless and you never want to do that. So let's undo. So yeah, uh, make sure you don't confuse symmetry with X mirror. And Blender only has the X mirror option. It doesn't have Y mirror and it doesn't have, have Z mirror. In my previous tutorials, I have mentioned that your character should always face front. That is a generally accepted practice and X mirror is one more reason to do so. If your character is oriented another way, you won't be able to mirror your weights. You'll have to manually paint each side. Lock relative and multi paint you won't use most of the time, so I'll skip them. Restrict can be kind of useful and I'll see if I can give you a practical example later. And I want to make you aware of a very annoying behavior in Blender. Let's say I set my weight to 1 and my strength to 0.3 and uh, then I paint here. If I decide that I don't like this brush stroke that I just painted and I uh, try to undo with Ctrl Z, you'll see that not only did my not only did my paint disappear, but the settings were reset to their previous state. That is very annoying and everyone I know hates it. And hopefully it will be fixed in the future, but for now we have to work uh, that way. And one workaround that you can use is, again, I'll, I'm going to set my settings to something like this. Since I have positive weight, that means that I want to add weights to my bone. So I'm going to click in an area that already has positive values. Just once. Here for some reason I had the X uh, symmetry on. Uh, that may be again because when I press Ctrl Z uh, some settings over here were reset. That is very very annoying. Let's uh, get rid of uh, symmetry and enable X mirror. And now I'm going to lightly click. Oh my god, again. Okay, I'm going to lightly click over here, then I can paint in another area, and if I don't like the painting, I can undo, and I can undo without losing my settings. So it took us a while to cover all of the basics, but now we are done, and once you understand these basics, weight painting is really just an annoying and time-consuming process, but it is not difficult to do. I'm going to switch to object mode for a second, select my armature and um, for viewport display choose stick. Then again shift select the character and, and go to weight paint mode. So the whole process is selecting your um, deforming bones, moving them around a bit and seeing where there, there may be problems. So here I can see that this arm bone should probably affect the shoulder a little bit more. So I'm going to set weight to 1 and strength to something low and paint a little bit. Here on the back I see that the arm may be affecting the back too much so I'm going to select my spine and paint some weights. Um, sometimes I like to turn off uh, the overlays and that will show me my actual mesh. And even though I don't see the overlays, I can still click and paint. If I select the, the head, I can see that the chin uh, seems to be a little bit uh, orange rather than red. Uh, the head bone should definitely be deforming the whole head. If I rotate it, you see, you'll see how the, the chin is kind of lagging behind a bit. So I'm going to set some higher strength and just paint on the chin. A 
I'll paint a little bit on the neck. This collarbone should actually raise together with the arm to achieve natural movement. Sometimes at intersection of bones, the blur tool can help you a lot. So I'm going to choose the blur tool and just click it in the shoulder area. And that will smooth the transition between uh, the arm and the other bones in that area. I think I lost some volume from the from the back, so I'm going to uh, select the, the spine and paint a little bit again. Now the leg is controlled by IK, so I need to control click the IK handle and then the whole mesh will turn this purple color. And that means that I have selected a non-deforming bone. Even though it is not a deforming bone, I can still select it and move it around so that I can test my deformations. While I was playing around and explaining stuff, I did paint way too much weights on this leg. So what I need to do is select this left pelvis and paint some weights on it. Uh, I'm with the draw brush. And as we explained earlier, thanks to this auto normalize, these weights will be added to the pelvis and spine area, but they'll be at the same time, they'll be removed from the leg. This crotch area is moving way too much with the leg. So select the spine and paint some weights over there. In this area, some of the vertices uh, weren't completely controlled by the uh, leg bone, so I painted them a little bit. Sometimes turning on wireframe can be useful. Maybe I can blur a little bit here. Now, if you blur too much, uh, you, you'll get too much of a soft transition, which I generally don't like. I think, especially with th these kind of low poly models, uh, having a little bit of an overlap between uh, the geometries is better than having a deformation that is too smooth. So that's the whole process. Uh, you just keep putting your character in uh, very extreme poses, uh, see what's wrong, and then try to fix it by applying your weights in a different way. And one eternity later, you'll have a perfectly deforming character. So here may be a good chance to uh, sh to show you what the restrict uh, option does. If I enable it and then go to draw tool with weight to one, and I'm also going to increase strength to uh, one to demonstrate. If I click over here in the blue area, it won't be affected. That is because this restrict option restricts the area that you can paint to the vertices that are Th that are already part of this group. Everything that is not yet part of this group will not be painted on. You still have to be kind of careful though, because if you paint over here uh, at the edge of the vertex group, then slowly it will start affecting the other uh, parts of the mesh. And you'll get something that is uh, that looks weird. I'm going to undo. Okay, and finally, let's cover Rigify. I'm going to go to Object Mode, select the armature, go to Pose Mode, select everything, and Clear Transforms. 
Now I want to unparent this character from this uh, simple armature and I, I want to parent it to my um, rigify rig. And this is something that you may have to do from time to time and it is not very straightforward. When we parented this character with automatic weights, this function did three things. It parented the, the character to the, to the rig, it added the vertex groups and it added the the armature modifier. So to undo the whole process, we have to do three three things. I am going to select the, the character, uh, Alt P, and I'm going to choose clear and keep transformation. Then I'm going to go to the object data properties, click this triangle here and choose delete old groups. And then I'm going to delete the armature modifier. And now my character is completely unparented from from the rig. I'm going to unhide the rigify rig, shift select it, I'm going to parent with automatic weights, I'm going to shift select the character and then go to weight paint mode and now if I control click any of these widgets then my character is uh, purple which means none of these bones are deforming bones. Where are the deforming bones? Let's go back to object mode, select the character, and then in armature tab, shift click this layer, which is layer 29, then shift select the character, go to weight paint mode, and here we have these bones. If I click them, I can see my vertex groups, and I can start painting. And that's it. Other than that, uh, the, the process is exactly the same. I can select this IK handle, move it, make an extreme pose, then select the back, start painting, smooth, exactly the same thing. That's it. I hope you learned a lot about vertex groups and weight painting. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe.